<laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Nancy Reyes with For Your K9. And Joanne Soiki with For Better, For Worse. Mm -hmm. I'm here at the Georgia airport getting ready to head back home. Uh, so I may have to put my mask on um, if there's too many people that get too close and all that. So um, just want to give you a forewarning in case you hear me very muffled. <laughs> but Joanne, Joanne understands muffled Nancy, so it's all good. Um, I speak so Nancy, it's you're fine. Uh, so let us know that you're out there. I know it's a different time. It's a little earlier um, than normal just because my flight is going to be leaving here uh, in the next hour. So hi, Susan. Hi, Mel. Um, so we wanted to try to get it in and make sure um, we cover the topic. And as usual, Joanne came up with this topic. And usually we come up with these topics because we've had an issue with it uh, recently or at some point in the last several months. So, uh, you know. Uh, this is something that we, um, this is how we kind of we come up with it. Or some, one of our students uh, are wonderful and suggest things to talk about. So those are all reasons why we do it. So hi, Barb. Hi, Terry, Mary, uh, Linda. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, um, and this is really a difficult topic, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, because it's, uh, there's no, it's not black and white. It's very gray and it depends on the dog. So um, there's a lot of schools of thought about punishment, correction uh, with, with the dogs and, and when to do it. So uh, there's extremes on both sides, right? Uh, and so we're kind of somewhere in the middle and we all like uh, Joanne and I, I, I don't know, Joanne, actually I've never asked you, uh, we all started doing um, like I started training with compulsion just like 30 years ago. So it was a long time ago. And at that time, that's really all there was. Uh, but when you find, when you find a better way, you change, you change how you do things. Right. Uh, so Joanne, did you start right at the pot where you, did you ever, cause you're kind of, you're a lot younger. So I wonder if you even did any of Yes, Yes, I am. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so no, no. Um, <laughs> I, I would call it compulsion, but I don't think it was like the horrific stuff from back in the seventies. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I started with pinch collars and choke chains and you know, if it was more so the do it because I said so, and if not, I'm going to make you, I'll push your butt down. I will do, you know, that sort of physical stuff, but it, it definitely wasn't, um, you know, we're smacking the dog in the face with the leash and that sort of, compulsion that I know existed back in the day, so. Right. Um, and I did I, I, I did that, but for a very, very short time. And it was not really, I didn't feel good about it. So obviously I wasn't really good at it. Uh, but anyway, but, and then now there's a new school of thought. Um, it's the other extreme where you ignore certain bad behaviors, which we do some of that for sure. Um, but <clears throat> at some point, you know, anything that you do, it's a rule of three. It's Suzanne's rule of three. It's like anything you see three times, it's going to keep happening. So you want to definitely uh, ear pinching. I know mm. that, that oh, I never had that crazy. I never did but, that either. Yeah, no way. <laughs> Somebody um, told me but, to, but I was like, that's not right. So Nope. <laughs> um, but yeah, we did do the pinch collars and so on. But anyway, so and then ignoring bad behavior in some cases works. So we wanted to kind of address certain things about that. So if you ignore bad behavior, um, ideally, if you if you do it well, or if it's in correctly timed, any anything of any kind of punishment or correction methodology should eliminate the behavior or decrease it at that point. If it doesn't, it's not working. So for example, uh, and, and this is what came up, if the dog is jumping up, which is extremely reinforcing for the dog, if the dog is jumping up uh, and you ignore him, and it decreases the behavior, fantastic. It works for that dog. But if the dog is, you know, we're, we're at five years later, it's still jumping up, you're ignoring it, it's still doing it, it's obviously didn't affect, it, there was no correction, right? Um, or it didn't, it didn't affect the behavior. What you did or that process didn't affect the behavior. So it's one of those things that if it's still do, if they're still doing the behavior and you're still having to do the correction, the ignoring, or whatever it is, it doesn't work. It didn't work for that dog. So you have to look for something else. 
And certain behaviors are extremely reinforcing. Barking, pulling <laughs> up, pulling <laughs> are very reinforcing. So there's a point where you have to step in and either manage it or do something different. So that's kind of how this whole conversation came up. And so since I currently have a dog uh, that um, likes barking and he finds it very reinforcing. I've had to look for things that will help with that problem, right? Because he's still doing it. I've tried a couple of things, but it worked. It decreased it a little bit, but he still wants to do it. So it's one of the, you, it makes you, a, you, it's almost like you're a detective. Like, what can I do to uh, do that? And one of the things is if you're going to use more compulsion, you have to make sure that it, that you, you're, it might affect your relationship with your dog, right? So it's something to consider. And in, in some cases, it's no different than a human, uh, a human, human relationship, right? Sometimes it's like you're going to have to have a tough conversation or you're going to have to uh, do something a little more drastic for certain for certain behaviors that, you know, some issues your, your people are having with, their, with another human being, right? Which might affect the relationship a little bit, right? Right. And if, if you're one of those people that has a dog with one of these types of behaviors and is potentially uh, human or dog reactive, right? Any kind of compulsion you got to understand is ideally going to make that worse, right? Because they're not going to view the negative uh, with the correction you're giving. They're going to view it with the thing that appears that they already had issue with. So you have to be very careful. Um you know, if you're going to choose to use something compulsive. Right. So for example, for jumping up, um, that's, a, a, you know, those of us that have labs and Vishla's apparently <laughs> and golden retrievers <laughs> can come to mind. <laughs> Vishla's were never on that list, but they are apparently these days. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so initially, the first thing is to manage that behavior, right? Not allowing them to jump up, have them sit, um, have them do a competing behavior um, so that they don't jump up on, on you or a, a, a person. So I'll be honest, I, with my own dog, I don't like her jumping up on me. I don't care. I don't like it so much, but I, I, I haven't really done anything to make it, to fix it. She doesn't jump on me that much. I do, however, don't want her jumping on other people and she wants to all the time. So what I've done instead, I, I've not punished her for it, but I have taught her from calling her away from somebody, I try to catch her and she has a really good recall to come away from the person and doesn't jump up. Uh, also, I also, if I, she's on leash, right, I can have her sit uh, or have her uh, check in with me so she doesn't go and jump up on that person if I catch it in time. But usually, it's I've I've managed it enough. Her jumping up isn't; she's not very persistent on it. Thank God, because she's a persistent dog for sure. Um, and if I tell her no or come here or sit or whatever or something else, she will do it. So, but I've worked on it because she's a big. She's sixty pounds. She's not a very big leg, but she's big enough that she can hurt someone, and I worry about that. So, uh, and I know she has some favorite people but I still don't allow her to jump on them. She loves Melanie. She loves Joanne. Um, so, and they're pretty good, pretty good about not reinforcing the behavior. So it's not so bad most of the time. Um, so those are kind of, so those are things I taught her. Like, I, I, like if I see her going towards somebody that I know she's going to want to jump up on, I call her back to me and she's very good about coming back. So those are some of the things that you can do instead of, you know, doing kneeing her which i didn't want to do because i don't want to affect the relationship with other people either right yep and i think it's really interesting because the more we look at some of those old world behaviors like kneeing right um and for those of you who might not know what we're talking about back in the day um as the dog jumped up you basically raised your knee um and you need him in the chest right and it was supposed to be um you know a, a correction it was supposed to be uncomfortable for the dog and then they would want to get off and realize hey jumping up creates pain right or something uncomfortable so i probably shouldn't do that so what they've actually found is is um and i, I like to explain this to people when you were if you were to ask your dog to jump on you and you were standing right um 
if you think about your body posture and what happens, right? You lean back a little bit, okay? And you open up kind of that frontal frontal area. So that's very inviting to the dog, right? It'd be kind of like, think about if you want to give somebody a hug, right? You, you open the arms, you open the chest area, and it's very inviting. So what happens is if the dog is coming up, as you're leaning back to bring that knee up, when you think about it, it's exactly the same upper body openness. And then, Pam, we're gonna we're gonna hit you with the knee, right? So it's very conflicting um, body language to the dog. Mm -hmm. So, right, it becomes very very confusing. Like, well, you just said come up, and now you're not, and I don't know. So, um, again, right, when we when we're trying to correct behaviors, and we're actually gonna step in to do something to correct a behavior, it has to be clear to the dog what you're trying to fix. Right. And that, and that, but that's a really good segue because the thing is you have to teach what you want, what the correct behavior is before you can punish it. Right. Cause if you just, if somebody just comes, if I go up, come up to Joanne and go smack her in the back of the head, she's going to be like, what? And it's going to be, you know, you're not supposed to be sitting in that chair. Well, <laughs> She doesn't know why I did it, and it's and that's that's the old school way, right? If you want to teach, if I asked her, "Hey, Joanne, please don't sit in that chair," and she keeps doing it, then I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna smack on the back of the head, whatever, <laughs> right?" Um, but if she doesn't know that that's an issue for me, or that's a problem, or that's not desirable, why? That's not fair, and unfortunately, that's with compulsion. That's the that's the that's the way it works, right? They, the dogs are just punished for. And they have to, and usually dogs are great. They figure it out, <laughs> right? Most of the time. Despite <laughs> um, us, yes. Despite us, they figure it out. So, uh, but usually it's like you want to teach the dog what to, what to do that's correct, that's the right behavior so that then you can, um, you know, then if you need to punish it or give them a timeout or whatever. And re, and so the other thing, so that's number one. You want to teach what, the, what you want the dog to do. Just somebody just punishing or yelling or doing whatever without giving them the right information isn't really helpful. And the, the other, um, the other thing is the pu correction, punishment, whatever you want to call it should fit the dog. Cause every correction is not going to fit every dog. <clears throat> you can go up or down on that. So you can have, you can, if you give us some dogs, if you go, ah, 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 that's like killing them. That's so harsh. And for other dogs, they'll be like, well, okay, whatever. And they'll move on. Did you right? say something? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so you definitely want to make sure that what is going to be effective for your dog, right? Um, and, and what's going to, what, what your dog finds punishing because you think it's punishing. It might not be punishing for your dog. Right. Like. It's almost like it's almost like a child. You're gonna correct him and you're gonna put him in his room that has a bunch of toys in it. It's like that's not really, you know. It's like okay, <laughs> gee, I'm so tortured. I'm gonna go and play in my room, right? <laughs> so it has to be, uh, it has to be for Golden's Labs and my Shepherd. Taking them away from human interaction is pretty punishing for them. So like if they don't, if they do something I don't like or whatever, I just leave the room. They're like, wait a minute, wait, come back. Other dogs mm -hmm. are like, you know, oh, well, she's leaving. I don't care, right? So it depends on what the dog finds punishing or so stop the behavior. The big thing is if what you're doing isn't stopping the behavior, then it, you need to look at change something else. And sometimes you want to look uh, outside the box, like with my lab. She's got a great recall, so calling her away from people works really well for jumping up. She, mm -hmm. will, do, she will come away from a person easily. And so, so the jumping up is less of an issue for her. My shepherd never had that problem. It's not a problem. They don't jump up. So it's not a problem. Yeah. But for my now, lab, she will come away. Well, and I, I, I think it's important to mention too, there's the opposite side of that, right? When we're going to use things like calling them away, if, if you were, if the dog's seeking attention and you aren't giving it in a normal basis, and the dog gives that behavior and you call them away, guess what? The dog's gonna learn, oh, I really want your attention, so I'm gonna go do that thing because that's how I get it. So this is where it right. starts to become really complex, guys. So it's 
it's like a it's like a con conversation with a human, right? You kind of have to figure out what is the what does the dog really want, you know? Um, what do they want out of that behavior, you know? And then what can you do to to stop that behavior, but not make it so reinforcing that they continue that behavior to get reinforced, right? Does that make sense? Right, absolutely. Yeah. Because that's why, and usually I manage it more, right? Like, and Joanne's right, because Jai would be like, I'll go to all the people and then be called <laughs> away, right? So, <laughs> so usually she's on leash, but like when we go to the facility, if Melanie's there, she's gonna wanna go say hi to her because she, she loves her. Um, so sometimes I have to call away from Melanie and then, um, especially if Melanie's eating, cause that's probably why she's going over there. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, so then I call away and put her up and then she can say, she can greet Melanie at another time when it's more convenient and more appropriate. Right. Um, so, and then, it, and going and uh, to the piggyback on that, if you're not able to manage it, or, or do something about it. Don't just let it happen. You have to, you have to adjust it, right? You have to put the dog in a crate or put it somewhere else so the dog's not running around trying to, uh, you know, jump up on everybody. If you if you're not going to be able to manage it, right? Or manage it or control it or do something about it, right? Yeah. So Cheryl, we were sort of just mentioning this too, right? What do you want the dog to do instead of jumping on you or standing up? You know hind legs or what else do you want the dog to do so for for jumping i know nancy and i both really find a sit is an incompatible behavior right if the butt's on the ground they're not jumping so right. the other thing is um for if you have a lab depending on your breed or golden uh teaching them to go get a toy is awesome yeah because they even though some of them will jump up with the toy in their mouth i'm just putting it out there uh, but usually, but usually, uh, if, um, if they have the toy, they're not, you know, they're not really, at least they walk, they, they go away, but you just remember they can jump up with the toy in their mouth. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, but that is, that is for some dogs that's, that work, that's good enough, right? They can just grab the toy, go get the toy and, and they, and they, you know, jumping up. It's all good. Right. Um, so. I can't read the thing because my contacts are hurting. Could you read that, Joanne? The Just whole thing? Cheryl. Cheryl, yeah. Yeah, so she said it's a new rescue. It's a lab mix. We think she may have some sight hound of some type or um, Italian greyhound, not sure. Rescue says it's a lab mix. It's uh, less than 19 inches tall and 11 months old. She wants to stand on her hind legs and thinks it's okay to jump on people. How do you suppress that? And she's a new rescue two days into her new home, right? So mm, that's a tough. I mean, and and this is this is where you really have to figure out the dog a little bit, right? Because is she is she standing and jumping because she really wants your attention and affection? Is she standing to try and be closer to you because she's a little nervous? Is she right? And and I'm gonna tell you, you know, without some pretty intense behavior reading techniques, right? Like basically if you're not a dog trainer and you haven't been observing dogs for years, two days is not, is not Enough very long. Time. It's really not. So, mm -hmm. um, you might, you, you might have ahead. to manage that for a little while until she's been at your home, in your home a little while longer. Cause it's, you have to know if it's an anxiety driven or excitement or effects. I mean, it, and it, cause it could be, um, could be anxiety driven, which makes the dogs jump up, trying to get up on you and stuff like that. So you really want to think about that, uh, about, you know, uh, before you, before you use any kind of correction, I might manage it more, meaning put her in a crate more, put her on the side of the gate more. So she's not practicing or put her on a leash, um, or something else like that, because otherwise she's practicing what you may not want, but you really have to figure out why she's doing the behavior, right? She's is she nervous? Is she, you know, what is, why is it happening? Right. Cause I like for it, it, jumping up is very reinforcing. Like I said, golden slabs, it's their jam. Right. And beachless. I don't know. <laughs> I swear. I think mine just comes at people like, <laughs> right. So him, I just, I can't let him approach people because he really, really, really wants to jump. So I've done two things with him, right? One is no, we're not seeing them until you calm down and you're not going to drag me over there. 
And the second one is on the approach, I've basically told him, right? Like, don't jump. So he understands jump up and don't jump. So I can get him really, really excited by myself and I'll give him like a, a chest tap, you know, okay, come on, come on up and let him jump on me. And then I'll get him really excited and say, don't jump. Right. So he sort of understands that command difference, right? Like now's not the time. Don't do that. So, but again, I had to teach that to him, right? He didn't just inherently know what no jumping means. So, um, okay. Nancy, I know you can't Joyce. read. This, so there's another one from Joyce. <laughs> and I feel like a grandma. I'm like, what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I've had my you know, contacts in all day and they're killing me. <laughs> we don't need to see your pores get close enough to the screen. So, um, <laughs> So what about an older dog that has started recently, I'm guessing it's recently, Joyce, uh, barking and charging the door when visitors come over. His excitability is so high, I can't bring it down to get any other behavior out of him. Um, mm -hmm. So this sounds um, unfortunately like one of those COVID things that has surfaced in the last two years with some of us, right? The visitors stopped and or they're out more and, and that sort of thing. Um, but I think one of the key pieces of your question here is that that excitability is so high, right? That arousal is mm -hmm. so high. Um, and, and when you have a dog in that super high state of arousal, there's no learning taking place anyway, right? right. You're just going to hold on for dear life and try to prevent the behavior from occurring. Um, and then she said, I've been having visitors completely ignore him till he settles down. So, so Joyce, let me ask you too. Um, does he jump on people or is he just barking and, and no, no, like, he loves people. I think she's talking about her older dog, Polly, which is a oh, love okay. machine. <laughs> He's okay. like a golden in a pity outfit. Uh, nice. so he, he is, he totally is. Um, and that's really common when they get older. Uh, uh, he's not jumping. He just gets so excited. So, Oh, with the high arousal with do with dogs jumping, I like to usually put him somewhere else so that because that coming in the door is such a highly charged area. So I just usually put him somewhere else, have people come in, settle, and then let him out, and then they can you know then he won't be as amped up, and then you can you know uh, have him sit or do something else. So um, and because he's a little older dog, they can be more they. As, he, as dogs get a little older, they get a little more anxious. So there might be, while he's a very excitable dog, he loves people, um, there might be a little bit of anxiety creeping in because he is getting older, right? Um, so that's causing that excitability to just look more. And it's just probably just a little bit of, just a tiny a little bit of anxiety in with that older dog thing. So just putting him in another room or doing, giving him, you know, keeping him while people come in and get settled and then let him out. They're still probably going to have to ignore him. He's still going to be excited, but you're not going to have that love, that higher, such a high level of arousal when the people are coming in the door. When people come in the house, that's, you know, dogs and people coming in the house, that's where people get bit, dogs get bit, and not that he's going to bite them, but, or that's where people get knocked over, or where the, the, it's such a, a very exciting place in, in every way, whether it's a dog coming through the door, a person coming through the door. So usually with people, I usually have the dogs in another room until uh, I can have time to address, and then they can they can he can hang out. And so usually that seems to work really well. Um, like I said, because Joyce, I'm guessing he you know he loves people, he's wonderful. But as he gets a little older, while there, he still loves the people. There's a, probably a tiny little bit of anxiety that's creeping in, because I can say that's true of Chacha too, and she loves people. It, it's not going to cause a big problem, but it's just they're more they're already a little more excited or anxious about the visitors. So something to consider. Yep, and it's a it's a good catch though, right? Because as our dogs age, sometimes we can start to see behaviors creep in that are not, uh, we've never seen before. So it's, it's normal that they change. So good to keep your eye on that. Yeah, um, so go ahead. Go ahead, you go ahead. You, you're reading, go read. Okay. <laughs> I can't read it. Would you would you suggest compulsion or positive reinforcement for screaming children? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sorry. not going to answer that. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so Linda, she said she's got a frisky three year old Pom mix. 
uh, he's taller and longer framed than her senior palm. She continuously humps on the senior dog. Um, sometimes at the top of the stairs, it's not safe. I think she enjoys the attention from, uh, from Linda and getting a rise out of the senior dog. Um, I have tried, sorry, I moved my mouse. Um, I've tried redirecting um, and get to get a toy and that seems to work at home. Um, but it doesn't work when they're out and about. She does it repeatedly. I don't know if I should yell, push her off, etc. cetera. Um, so the, it's a humping behavior she's doing? Yep. So, how, okay. So. So many questions. Does she, yeah. Well, does she get to the, how does she get to the other dog outside? Is it, are they out on the yard or in, on a walk? I think she mentioned a walk. She says out and about, so I'm betting she's just got the dogs out either on a walk or, you know, mm -hmm. probably on leash, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the humping isn't a, just so you know, it's not always a sexual behavior. It's probably excitability on her part. Um, and did she say she always did that? No, I don't think so. Uh, she says she continuously does it. So I don't know if it's been a new thing or a thing since she brought the dog home. Three-year-old mm. mix. Mm. So one of the things I did for um, that behavior, because <laughs> I've had that behavior, uh, was rescue dogs. I usually, I definitely interrupt it. I will not let a young dog hump the senior dog ever. Um, but I would, I would, be, I would um, do, give her something else to do. A sit, a down, some other training type behaviors to interrupt that and bring that arousal down because that's what you're doing is bringing the arousal down because that humping could be just excitement and arousal so you need to whatever you, so you got to think of it that way don't think of it in terms of um you know sexual it's arousal so bringing the arousal down is going to be your best friend right? figuring out how to calm that down so if it means that she they start playing and she gets aroused just interrupt the play um, or if, when they're out, you know, if on, on a walk, stop and sit and do some sits and downs and another. And um, that's one way you can uh, interrupt that behavior and bring that arousal down. Right. Remember, when you're dealing with high arousal, stopping the motion, right, is really a nice way to become stationary and it helps them to kind of bring it all down. So, um, all right. So, uh, either Lucia or Lucia. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Um, but this is a really, really good one. I'm glad that we're going to talk about this question. Um, it's an American bully mix, maybe with a border collie. Um, it's a female nine months old. She growls and snaps when she's laying down. How do we curb that behavior? So basically, right, why is she doing it? So there's all, so many different reasons why perhaps she's doing it. Um, you know, is, is she nervous about laying down? Is the room really small? Is there another dog around? Is, um, you know, are you, are you, is she doing it when you're coming closer or just, just in the room? Right. Um, but I really, really want to, was hoping for a question like this, cause I did want to touch on this, right. Part of the, the things that we always want to correct is when a dog growls, not true. Okay. It's really not dogs growling are basically saying, Hey, feeling uncomfortable, not enjoying what's happening right now. Okay. It does not mean that dogs can explode out or bite you. It's information. All right. So while I'm not just going to let that continue to go on. Okay. I don't always want to necessarily say you stop growling, right? I need to know why, why are you feeling uncomfortable? What's happening that is causing you to tell me something's wrong. Okay. Um, so you, you really are going to want to explore that behavior. Um, but again, there's just, there's a lot of questions. Is there another animal involved? Is there children involved? Is there a space involved? Is she claiming a space? Is she, does she have a toy or a bone or something that she's growling about? Um, so it's, it's hard to give um, really broad advice on that topic, right? Until you know why. Right. It could be a physical thing. It could be, yeah, it could be, a, uh, an, a, you know, territory. It could be, yeah, it could be a million things why she does it. Um, and she's nine months old. So, you know, usually I would, we always look at the physical first, make sure there's nothing major like that. And then, um, then move on from there. Right. Um, 
so it's one of those things that <clears throat> you want to kind of uh, check it out. But yeah, don't don't stop the growling, because back in the day, that's what they would do is they would stop the dog from growling. Well, then they then you just went straight to the bite if there was an issue, because they would they wouldn't uh, you didn't get that information that warning like hey don't do that and go from there. Yeah, and you know, I know we we get questions sometimes said the dog you know, on dog bites when dogs actually do connect and bite people. Oh, it was totally unprovoked. It just came out of nowhere. It did not. You know, I I had one case a, a many many years ago. It was the first one I've ever seen. It was a mastiff, so a really really big dog. That dog gave zero zero warning before it would, you know, try to bite you. And and that's that just is not normal behavior, right? That's not normal physiological behavior is to just have blank stares and then bam, explode into um, something mm -hmm. very serious. And, you know, in talking with the owner, what had happened, every time the dog growled, every time the, the dog gave a side eye, they would correct the dog. So pretty soon the dog's like, all right, that stuff doesn't work for me. So I'll just go right to what does work and I'll bite you. So it's really hard. I mean, and dogs do learn very, very well about what behaviors get corrected and what don't. So be careful. Right. And uh, I'm going to touch upon Lisa, Linda. Linda mentioned it was dominance. Mm, it's, that stuff is not always uh, dominance. You know, it's not, not always. Usually, in my experience, not that it couldn't be, but in my experience, a lot of the humping behavior is, is, is really um, arousal and over arousal. Yep mostly uh is mostly what we get unless there's a you know there's a other reason which is a sexual reason but most of the time that is that is ba that's an arousing arousal behavior not so much dominance right yeah. um and there's a whole that we could probably do a whole talk on dominance which we might at some point but <laughs> but yeah usually when we see that uh that behavior it's usually uh, arousal that i've seen um my young male Shepherd uh, started doing that behavior when he was young, and it was just I just interrupted it and didn't let him practice it because I don't want that. <laughs> and he, thank God, because he's 95 pounds right now, so it would be awful. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So John asks a question. Shabon has two speeds when we are away from home. She's often shy with friendly people um, that are strangers to her. And full on excited and jumping over and over when she knows and likes you, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those, right? I, I think when dogs are allowed to practice a behavior over and over and over again, that's what becomes the norm, right? It's sort of like every time we go to grandma's house, we get to have a piece of candy from the candy dish, right? So, you know, the six-year-old doesn't even say hi to grandma anymore. She just wanders over to the candy dish and picks the candy because that's what we do when we go to grandma's. Um, and so I think, you know, one of the big things with, with kind of behavior like that is we don't want to allow it to occur, right? That's not what I want you to do. So what do you want her to do instead? Again, sit works really well. And so knowing this dog as well, right, she's very, very energetic and she's also pretty quick to arousal, right? Meaning it doesn't take much uh, for her to just kind of hit zero to 60, okay? Um, and so, you know, again, trying to be stationary, rewarding the dog for checking in with you and, um, you know, sitting and really just kind of being calm um, is really gonna help her in, in so many different ways. Um, so Nancy, I don't know, do you have anything for like really over um, energetic jumping. Yeah, no, I would uh, have her sit and then you can have, you know, sitting helps or down is really helpful as well. Um, and I would probably, um, and it, and one of the things that you have to actually train the people too that she knows and loves, because chances are they see her like, oh, fluffy. So she doesn't know that she shouldn't do it to some people and she should do it to others. So there should be a prior protocol, especially if she's worried about some people and not about others. So the the greeting should be the same for all, no matter what, whether they're new or known, right? And then that way, it's, it's a comfort, a routine that this is how she meets people and this is how it works. And it's usually pretty straightforward for the dog. And then it also gives that dog a sense of like, okay, this is how we, this is, 
that routine really helps them. And this is how we greet people, right? Right. Um, I, I wanted, uh, Deb asked about the age that changes. Deb, it's just like people. Some of us age better than others, or faster or slower, <laughs> right? So uh, yeah, it depends on the dog. But you know what, depending on your dog, like and depending on the size, like I have a shepherd, she's 13. You start, I started seeing some uh, some behave changes in her in different behaviors at nine years old, right? And um, you know, and then, but they're not dramatic; they're just very minor. And when they're as they get older, it's those little things that you notice. And some of us don't want to see those changes, but they're there. Um, and like I said, like with Joyce with Polly, Cha Cha is uh, there's a she's a very nice dog, but she's a little more she's a little bit more anxious about little things not super anxious not where she needs meds or anything like that but you could see she's worried she doesn't like to be left too long if i'm not here she doesn't like certain things she doesn't like that so it's a it's a you know it's a, i noticed that before she didn't care now she cares more so yep. it really depends on the dog and, and how you know how they're aging just be aware that when they just be aware when things are starting to happen and then just make sure it's nothing else. But like, you know, just notice that, okay, that's different. She did used to do that. Yeah. And I mean, I would say with the old dogs, right. The things that we probably notice first are auditory and visual stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Right. They're getting a little nervous about, you know, uh, noises that they never worried about before or you know certain times of day you notice they may be a little reluctant to go outside um and those are pretty pronounced right but the little weird stuff happens before that so um yeah Aaron, Aaron mentioned the the race and warning behaviors yep i mean it, it basically was leaving the dog with no option to tell you how they're feeling and so you know of course they're miserable right they, they just keep continue to get corrected for trying to express their discomfort so. right so judy was having a humping with the lab did you read that yeah uh, read that? 19 month old lab going through her second heat cycle so is it best to go ahead and interrupt humping behavior while she's finishing her cycle rather than letting two dogs work it out the spade lab mix has corrected her for doing this twice and the lab then leaves her alone at least for a while and the lab's scheduled to be spayed um 1101 so judy my first question would be is she only do the humping behaviors while she's in in estrus right when i mean when it's time for her um or is she doing it all the time um because if it's this is one of those cases where if she's really only doing it during her cycles, this would be sexual, right? This would be a female dog um, ready to breed who is trying to find something, right, to to procreate. Um, and so she's, you know, they do it. If you guys have never, a lot of people don't have intact dogs, but if you've never seen it, when a female is in those few days of truly truly you know the progesterone is high and ready to go um th they will back dogs into the corner and they they flag their tails which they, they which basically means they they move their tails up and to the side to expose themselves which i think you couldn't move a tail like that in normal life without breaking it like i don't know how they do it but um that sort of thing they really really do um are, are seeking out sexual behaviors. Yes. Yeah, see, so she said just during the cycle. Um, so, so yeah, Judy, my guess is your spay is gonna, is gonna fix that. Um, however, correct. Like when she, it, it's probably that, you know, five to seven days, um, in the middle of the cycle. And so I, I would, uh, I would definitely interrupt that behavior. And maybe if she's really relentless about it, just put her behind a baby gate, right? Get that other dog some space, put her in a crate, give her a nice something to chew on. Um, but just, I would keep them separate personally if it was just mm -hmm. that one piece. So. Yeah, because you could get a pretty nasty uh, fight that way too. Right. right. Hormones are high. So. Dogs, be, yep. So <laughs> if you've ever been around two women that are in season, no. <laughs> <laughs> could get rough. Why'd you say it like that? 
so so the so the, the thing the takeaway that I want you guys to think about is you want to think about and you remember if the behavior doesn't bother you, don't worry about it, right? Everybody picks and chooses what behaviors are okay for them or for the or for their uh, their situation. And you really want to make sure that the dog knows what you want to what you want them to do. Like Joanne said, what do you want them to do so that you can deal with with the unwanted behavior? But if they don't know what you want, then it's it's hard to correct it or fix it or ignore it even because you're ignoring and they're like, okay, I don't know why she's doing that now, but okay, right? So it's just something to think about and think outside the box. Like sometimes it's not always a correction that you're going to do. It's something you might want to, you want, might, might want to fix it with a, another incompatible behavior. Um, and yeah. And the other thing I want to, I wanted to say about that is that um, sometimes, uh, sometimes, you know, dogs could hear no, you can say no to them and you can tell them to knock it off. Right. That is okay. Because you would do that to another person too. You do that to a person. You would tell them, stop it, don't do that. So it is okay. Because I know there's a school of thought that, you know, you don't, don't ever say no to God. Like, well, I wish I had my life that I didn't have. No, nobody said that to nobody. I never heard no. But unfortunately, that doesn't all work. It's just, you just want to be fair, is basically what right. it comes down to. You want to be fair. Right. And, and remember, no information sometimes is worse for the dog. Um, cause if, if they're confused on a behavior, right. That you're, you're trying to get rid of, sometimes you can make things worse by just ignoring them. Some dogs are really saying, mm -hmm. Hey, not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Can I get a little piece of information? Right. So even if you're right. not going to say no, come here, sit, shake, high five, do something else. Right. Um, but I did just want to touch on one thing that Nancy said, because I want to clarify it a little bit. Right. If, if your dog's behavior doesn't matter to you, then don't worry about it, eh, eh, right? I have a 75 oh, yeah. pound Doberman, okay, who loves to launch himself at people's faces, right? It does bother me, but let's just say it didn't. Let's just say, it's fine, he's he's just saying hi, right? So no, <laughs> that, like, he's gonna send somebody to the hospital. He will knock you down, somebody will fall on the cement and crack their head open, right? That's very real of what he would do. Um, so, you know, yes, even if I don't mind, that's something I have to manage so nobody sues me, right? When they get, when we have to call 911 and get stitches in their head. Um, so, right, right if, if it's something like, oh, he barks, you know, he barks at bedtime before he doesn't want to go to bed and that doesn't bother you and, you know, your windows aren't open and your neighbors aren't calling animal control on you, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Right. But if it's something that does involve another human being or another dog, right, that is not enjoying that behavior, that is when, even if it doesn't bother you, you got to do something about it. Right. And that's, yes, exactly right. Um, but, you know, like, and, 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 and you want to try to figure out the, you want to start with the path of least resistance, the easiest way to fix it before you move on to other, um, to other uh, options. For example, my shepherd barks in my office. It's driving me crazy. Um, I have considered more punitive type of methodologies to stop that behavior. But I'm going to exhaust everything else, right, uh, to try to help that behavior because I don't like it and it really bothers me, right? So I, but I, so I'm trying a couple of different ways, a couple of different other things to help with that because it does bother me too, <laughs> as well as everybody else. Um, so <laughs> get ready to go home. <laughs> nice. Are you the last one? No, no, they just started. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, Deb asked a question when a growl has been removed, can it be retaught back? Not usually, not unless no. the dog is totally removed from a situation, put somewhere brand new. And, and even then, it really, it doesn't come back. So, right. yeah, that's, um, a, that's a real big deal when you take that away. Just saying. Yep. Oh, Mary has a good question. What do you personally ignore with your own dogs? I'm trying to be careful. If I know I can't manage the cue, I don't give it. I think it creates a tendency to ignore me and devalue me. Um, what do you ignore with your dogs? I ignore attention seeking. 
right? So yeah, I have the Vishla who wants to wear my clothes. And, yeah. you know, if he's going to claw, paw, whatever, I'm just like, mm -mm, you don't, you don't exist to me, right? If you sit and nicely, you know, come next to me, I see you, right? If you're nice about it, then I'll be like, oh, hey, here, you want some pets, right? Um, sometimes like whining at the door, right? Um, certain dogs, one dog I can ignore if they whine, if they see a squirrel outside and they'll stop. The other one I can't, he'll go through the door. So I have to step in. So see, that's that squirrel sort of thing. When they see something out that back door and a critter, one dog ignoring it works. The other dog, dear God, I can't because he will just wind himself farther and farther up um, until something very bad happens. So mm -hmm. what about you, Nan? I'm moving that. Uh, stuff that I ignore. Uh, hmm. Let me think, because I do ignore some stuff, for sure. Uh, so while you're thinking, I I'll address your last sentence there, Mary. Right? If, if you can't manage the queue, it creates a tendency to ignore and devalue you. Don't think of it so rigid like that, okay? You're not going to break the dog if one time you're late on a queue or whatever. You won't break them. What happens is, is like over and over and over again, the dog's in the back of the yard and you're like, come, Fido, come, 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 right? And then the dog's pretty much like, no. So if, if you're, you know, a couple of seconds late, dogs really are intelligent and they figure that out, right? So don't don't be too afraid to, to give a cue if you think it's a little off. Right. And so stuff that I, oh, like um, for my little dogs, the jumping up. Uh, my, I have two little dogs, and Rizzo jumps up, you know, all the time. And she, or not all the time anymore, but she jumps up, and sometimes she's, she does that. If she jumps up, I don't care. She does a little scratchy thing on my leg. I hate that. Um, and so we, I do ignore that, and she doesn't, and she, and then I walk away from her. So I even go so far as to just walk away from it. And she's like, oh, and she doesn't, usually doesn't do it. And she's, it's been a long time since she's done that behavior because it works for her. She doesn't like the removal of me. And you could say that's uh, ignoring, right? Because I ignore that. It's like, you, you get nothing. I'll just leave, right? She makes me go away. Um, right. And so as we, as we talk about it, you know, I, you don't hear Nancy and I talking about the true scientific terms and the gradients and the, that, right. But they, they exist and, and everyone follows them. So just to, just to touch on it really, really quickly, positive punishment and negative punishment, what the positives and negatives mean, are you adding something or are you taking something away? Right. So positive punishment is the knee right? I'm adding the aversive. I'm adding something that's uncomfortable or painful to the dog. Okay. The negative punishment means I'm taking something away. So, right. Her walking away and ignoring these behaviors, it, it is punishment, right? It is a correction. It's just, it's just much more fair to the dog to kind of walk away. Right. Um, all right. Are you talking Nance? I there was. You go. Yeah, I've got, I, was I saw your mask moving uh, a little bit. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> so, so one of the things is you definitely, um, and I'm not going to say that punishment, that compulsion doesn't work because it does. Okay. It, it absolutely does for some dogs. It absolutely works. So we're not saying it doesn't work. We just are hoping that in the relationship, it's, it's no different in the relationship with, with your dog that you're going to try path of least resistance you're just not gonna but doing but if you're you any anything you you put on you you add or you take away you want the behavior to diminish or improve and if it doesn't you're doing it wrong so stop right you definitely want that behavior to to either get a, extinguish or or get better so if, and if you're doing all the stuff you know like i i've had trainers come people come with dogs that are still doing the behavior years later like and they're ignoring it years later so it, it doesn't work it's just now a, a different routine you guys have going on right remember anytime you're trying to change behavior good or bad right it 
if things are not progressing, even if it's minimalistically slowly, right? If your line is not going upwards and change, something's not correct. So you have to alter something in your training. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a huge one. Yep. Yep. Judy, Judy has a really nice example of something she implemented. Uh, her lab mix steals stuff and then runs around knowing the actual lab will chase her. Um, so she calls the lab, have, has her sit, then calls the lab mix, this, this thief, right? And uh, has her bring the item, which she'll do. And then she sends that dog to go get a toy, right? So that's that's working with a dog because clearly she's she's sort of stealing things to get attention, whether it's from the other dog or Judy. And so what, what Judy's tried to do here is saying, yeah, the lab mix will chase you, but I'm going to stop that. So, hey, other dog, come here. And then the dog who's stolen something, oh, come here, what do you have, right? I'm gonna get that and then why don't you go get a toy and maybe we can play with that a little bit, right? So the dog really does get the attention just not from the behavior of stealing things. Right. So. All right, I know Nancy's listening for her uh, boarding call. So let me ask you guys, we might have to go a little short tonight. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, on kind of things of ignoring or when to put something into place. Yeah. And this is a pretty, this is a, hey, Tracy. <laughs> Come see the kind of nibbles. Oh, the front teeth. Oh, uh, this is a tough one. So what those, it's what those little plus. front teeth oh. nibbles are, it's actually a sign of affection in the dog world. So, hi, Donna. <laughs> um, yeah, those nibbles really, it's its a sign of affection. So its its it hurts. Yeah, the dog's actually being like, I love you so much. Uh. <laughs> um, so it's, it's kind of hard. I might, you know, interrupt that behavior if it hurts you and just be like, oh, I love you so much. What a good dog, right? And I might pet the dog instead. Um, and, and so, yeah, right, you're saying it's a soothing thing. He does it to his toys, his sister, his blankets. It is, it is yeah. absolutely a sign of affection in dogs. Right, especially that dog. <laughs> the wire hair vishla, right? Yeah. So, Natalie Brown, need I say more? Brown, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's it, hard because well, it's hard, and so that's why you want to give them something else to do, right? Mm -hmm. That's not because that's hard. If so, it's no different if somebody comes and hugs you, and you're like, okay, get away. That's or like, I can't breathe. Not so hard, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So much, come down. So yeah, you well, can figure I, out a, a, a different way, right? Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing. I remember one lady. Um, I used to teach classes down in Muscatine, and she was an older lady. Holy cow, she was a handshaker. I I've never met a man in my life that shakes hands as hard as this woman. Like the first time she gripped my hand, I was like, ow, not so hard, right? So it's sort of the same thing. <laughs> she was doing it in terms of like, hey, it's really nice to meet you. Glad to see you again. And you're like. Ow, not so much, right? So you can't really correct it. Like, don't shake my hand. Don't shake my hand so hard. <laughs> yeah. Right. Why does my cockapoo lick his rear so much? He has no worms. Um, yeah, so that one too might be something physical there, Donna. I know oh, yeah. um, your dog, I've seen your dog kind of pictures on Facebook. So I'm guessing you said it to the groomer. And a lot of times um, what happens over time is the groomers will express the anal glands, whether or not they need to be done. And that can actually cause some scar tissue on anal glands and dogs can get a little uncomfortable. And they also don't express them as well themselves um, once the, the groomers start doing that. So um, I, I might try to add a little more fiber into his diet um, see if you can get right. a little more stool and that helps to express those anal glands. I would want to try that and see if that licking behavior, um, at least slows itself down and maybe talk to my groomer and say, don't express his anal glands unless I specifically ask you to. Right. And I'm sure they wouldn't mind not doing it. Right. <laughs> right, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's uh, yeah, so definitely yeah, that's really hard, right? The 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 um, the, the the affection when dogs trying to show you affection and you're like that, you find it really difficult. I 
I totally feel it because sometimes I do that with my. Sometimes. All the time. I let the vet. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. All the time. Um, somebody put there about the dog barking at nothing. Oh, my God. Well, luckily, I don't have that. Um, but jo Joanne does sometimes where they bark at nothing. Us well, usually they're barking at some kind of a critter. Um, and so, Mary, uh, it could be that it's excitement. You're excited to go outside and stuff like that. So if they're together, you might try sending one dog at a time, one dog, then the other dog it might decrease that barking a little bit, right? Because they're not both running out there excited and, you know, and that might decrease it. I, I, it may not eliminate it, but it'll dec hopefully decrease it some. Yeah. What was the name of that again? Uh, anal glands, Donna? Is that what you were asking about? Pumpkin. Pumpkin can be psyllium does it too, but don't give them too much or you can constipate your dog. So I, I might talk to my vet about it. Um, just give them a call and they should be able to, to give to actually talk to you about it. There was a product. Uh, yeah, psyllium was probably what uh, I was talking about. But again, like I would call my vet and and just say, hey, I think my dog's having an anal gland issue. Is there some extra fiber I can add in and how much for the weight of my dog? Because they would be really the ones to give you a really good, um, safe amount that's not going to constipate right. your dog or, you know, not be enough. So. Um, so I'm, I'm going to let Joanne wrap up because my flight is actually almost ready to go. Uh, <laughs> Thanks all. Okay. Joanne will Joanne will finish up. Thank you all for joining us tonight, and we'll, I'll see you soon. Bye, Joanne. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Have a safe flight. Oh yes. Um, on it. <laughs> all right. Mindy has an annoying whine and runs into me for support when other dogs in the building are heading out. Try to stop, but I know it's because she's fearful. Yeah. So this is one of those really tough ones, Deb. Um if she's not like clawing her way up you or hurting you, um, I, I wouldn't do too much with it. Um, I, I would comfort her. Right. I mean, um, Suzanne Clothier, right. She, she has a really good way of saying it. She goes, I don't know of a, of a mammal mother in the world that wouldn't comfort their young when they're nervous or scared. Right. Um, so sometimes what you hear is those comments of, Oh, just, you just don't coddle them. Well, you're not coddling. Just sometimes it's like, here, come here, stand next to me. I might put a hand on her. Um, I think if you really wanted to train something, um, you could, right? Like sometimes they do the like go in between the legs um, and the dog can, can let you know that way. Like, Hey, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. Can I, can I get some comfort? I think that sometimes can be a little dangerous if you're not expecting it. Right. We don't want your dog to trip you. Um, so sometimes, you know, like sitting right in front of you or coming into kind of like that heel side sit position, um, you know, might be helpful. And then you can, you know, it's her way to tell you, hey, need a little help here. Not not feeling so good. So, yeah, I mean, I, unless it really, really bothers you or becomes a safety concern, Deb, I I wouldn't stop it. I would offer her some comfort in that situation. Um. Okay, about the barking. She's on leash and she's a palm. So they are barking. I've been playing the touch games. Is that good? Um, yours were the dogs that went outside, right? Sorry, I'm trying to, yeah, going outside and barking at nothing. Um, yeah, Mary, so she's on leash and they're, um, you could play the touch game. Yeah, that's absolutely going to interrupt that behavior. Um, right. So I, I would be curious though, right? Like, is it all the time or just some infrequent? Cause if it seems to be all the time, they may be barking at something that you're not hearing, right? Maybe it's a neighbor or, you know, a dog around the neighborhood that maybe you don't hear. Um, but yes. So the touch game is great to interrupt that behavior. Another really, really good one. Um, to kind of chill them out in the yard a little bit if, if they're really having is to take kind of a handful of cookies. It's a palm. So really small cookies. Right. And you can just kind of chuck out eight to 10 cookies and let her hunt around um, in the grass. And that should keep her busy for a minute. So that interrupts that behavior as well. 
Right. Um, crawls on the couch with you, Deb. Yeah. So then absolutely. I, I would comfort the dog. She's, she's looking for some assistance there. All right. Um, Ronnie puppy nibbling on older dogs muzzle. They're getting tired of it. When and how should we break it up? Yeah. So again, it's that nibbling behavior is really a, an affectionate behavior. Doesn't necessarily mean the older dogs need to like it though. Right. So, um, when you say they're getting tired of it, like, are they getting up to move? Are they growling? Um, are they just trying to move their face away? Like, um, cause you do have a puppy and I think she's still pretty young, right? I think she's like four months old, maybe. Um, so it matters what the other dogs are doing because if your adult dogs are kind of just like, ugh, you know, looking away, but they're not getting up to move. Um, that's actually kind of a teaching moment for the puppy moving away, like actually physically getting up and moving away. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, it's that too, as long as it's like easy going and the puppy doesn't follow them and continue the behavior, I would say that's fine. Right. So again, it's all communication in dogs. So the adults are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you too. Don't want that. Right. I'm going to go lay over here. And if she's like, oh, well, okay, well, I'm going to go play with this toy or chew on my bone or whatever. It's fine. Um, and what you'll see is as she gets a little older and a little older, your adults probably might do a low growl, lift a lip a little bit, right? Um, maybe just change their body posture a little bit towards her. And that should tell her like, Hey, stop that. So as long as the adults really aren't, um, don't seem to be agitated by it. It's kind of just a calm, like ugh, her again. Right. And they get up and move and the puppy's not following them, right? She's not being relentless about it. I wouldn't do much. Um, she trades between each one. Yeah. So it looks like she's just looking some, for some affection as well. So if she goes to one, they move, she goes to the other, they move. I might call her and be like, Hey, let's play some tug or let's chase a toy or a ball or whatever it is. Right. Just sort of redirect that behavior as well. Yep. All right, you guys, is there any other questions um, on this topic? Again, just to kind of recap everything, um, you know, way back in the day, there was a lot of compulsion. And then, you know, I think sometimes they've moved now to this, we never say no to our dogs. And then just like everything, every good training, it's, it's, there's a mashup of things, right? So there's, um, there's a better way, but what you always want to, ask your dog is why are you doing this behavior, right? Sometimes it's over arousal. Sometimes it's, you know, that excitement about everything. Sometimes it's fear. Um, sometimes it's attention seeking behavior, you know, all, all of those things. So you really want to know why is my dog throwing out this behavior that I don't like, see if you can understand it and then try to ask the dog to do something else um, that, you know, furthers, what is the dog looking for? Um, and, and sometimes it's okay too, to be like, not right now, go lay down, right? Go have a Kong, go have a bone, go play with something else. I'm busy, right? Especially we shouldn't have to entertain our dogs 24 um, seven. Jill, we want our four and a half month puppy out of her X pen crate, but she will not leave the two adult dogs alone. Um, how, how do your adult dogs feel about that? Are they trying to get away from her? Um, so Part of what that is, this is a, this is a really tough one because it's going to depend on your adults as well, right? The, the, the puppy's going to have to learn, right? Um, and, and this is where the adult dogs do offer some corrective behavior, right? Now we don't want a hole in your puppy's head. Um, but you know, we can correct and correct, you know, and remove and take them out of that situation. Um, but we can't communicate nearly half as well um, as an adult. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So if the other, if the adult wants to play, I mean, I think that's all right, you know, and then separate them and give the puppy a break and then put them together and separate them. If the other adult dog is just given some growls, right. Or, you know, lip curls, growls, that sort of thing. And is, is kind of holding her ground, like get away from me. Um, 
you have to know your own dog, right? Like I hate to say it's fine. Let them work it out. Cause that's not true. Um, however, a little bit of a dog correction where they're kind of snipping at them a little bit, right? It's information that that puppy really needs. Um, especially with the one adult, like do whatever I'm fine. And the other one's saying no. So, so again, kind of how we talked about, um, that clear communication, the dog needs to understand, um, you have to ask, you can't just run in and, and jump on grandma's lap, right? Hey grandma, how you feeling today? Is it okay? You know, can I, can I come up on your lap? So, you know, sounds like your one dog's like, whatever, let's wrestle, you know, and the other one is like, not feeling it today. Um, so, so maybe I might do some on leash stuff. Okay. Um, where I might tether my adult, you know, or if she's good and she's not moving and I might hold that puppy on a leash. Right. And just kind of let the communication happen there. Um, and then teach your puppy to call away from the adult dog. He, when I call you, even if you're trying to interact, come over here, you'll get a cookie. Okay. Um, the other one doesn't, she won't correct her. Okay. So she just, does she just like get up and leave then um, in that scenario? Or is she just letting the dog do whatever? Um, my palm barks to every single dog he sees when we are walking or he sees from the window vibration and sound colors have not worked. Any other suggestions? Yeah. So, um, the, the vibration collars, right. Unless the dog understands what you want him to do instead. Right. So what I would do is <clears throat> we, I know we posted it. Um, if you look at last week's video, we posted the auto check-in the from Suzanne Clothier's auto check-in. That's a really, really good one. So teach the dog to check in with you um, when he sees another dog coming. Okay. Cause if all he knows how to do is bark, 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 bark. And all we're doing is correcting the dog's not sure what else to do. Right. Here comes a dog. Here comes a dog. Here comes a dog. Oh, my neck's vibrating. Here comes a dog. Right. What, what else is there? Um, so if you have the dog check in with you, right. And you can say, yes, nice check in. Here you go. Why don't we sit? Right. Let's watch that dog walk by. And if the dog really can't watch the, the dog walk by without kind of the barking lunging at it, then you're too close. You need to add some distance there. Um, and so I think, I think it was last week, right. We talked a lot about, um, about sort of that over arousal, um, type of thing. So that might be a really good one to watch. I know we hit that in a lot of detail, that sort of behavior. Um, yeah, she gets up, but we have to drag the puppy away. Okay. So, I mean, Jill, I feel you, right? Here's the thing. Those are, they're going to have to live together for their lives. So it's like the adult's going to have to learn how to do something. Um, but you don't want to like throw her to the wolves. So, yeah, I mean, what I would do is learn to call that puppy, right? So that she really gets heavily reinforced um, for her, a recall, for coming back to you. So that no matter what, you know, if she's really starting to annoy the, the older dog, you can just be like, hey, puppy, come here. And she does. And then you can separate them, right? Play with the other dog that loves to play with you. Like, leave this one alone for a little while. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate everyone coming. It was a, a good topic. I'm glad we got to talk about it. Um, if you have any other questions, definitely you can let Nancy or I know. And uh, we should have a new topic for you next week. So if you haven't, please like uh, uh, and follow our Facebook pages for betterforworse.com and uh, for your canine. And you'll be able to follow all of the new topics on Sunday nights. So thank you guys. Have a good week coming up. Bye.